Assalamualaikum dear all participants, researcher and faculty member. I am Muhammad Javed Iqbal, MPhil scholar from Government College University, Faisalabad. First of all, I would like to welcome you all in the 5th International Conference on Applied Zoology 2022 on the behalf of Organizing Committee ICAS 2022. And I am pleased to be the moderator of the 6th and the 2nd last session of Conference Day 1 there is an exciting talk plan, including what I know regarding the field of drug discovery, physiology, epidemiology, cancer biology, and entomology. Let's start our session with our first presenter from Iran, Yudmiya University, Parisa Muhammad, Muhammad Sifat. She will present her research work on the title, The Effect of Environmental Factors on the Biodiversity and Body Size of Macroinvertebrates in the Tajan and Gurganan rivers and Capsian Sea. Please, Miss Farisa Muhammadi Sifat. Hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to attend the international conference in Pakistan. This is Farisa Muhammadi Sifat from Iran, a PhD student in agriculture sciences. We, my professor, Dr. Zoria Zahra, and I have prepared this precious information. I hope that it will be helpful for everyone who needs it. The topic of our work is the effect of environmental factors on biodiversity and body size of Macroinvertebrates in the Tajan and Gorgonic rivers and the Caspian Sea. First of all, I want to define these words like uh, microinvertebrates, uh, transitional water, environmental factors, and body size. Microinvertebrates. Uh, here uh, our name is microgenetic, the organism live in bottom of the aquatic places, for instance, sea, rivers, and uh, environmental factors and tran transitional water. Are those waters between land and the sea and include estuaries, lagoons, uh, deltas, and so on. They often encompass river mouth and so uh, show the transition from freshwater to marine conditions. Environmental factor. The factors such as temperature, salinity, dissolved oxygen, conductivity, and pH, which directly affect the girls and nutritional behavior of the aquatic organisms and can reflect change in uh, river ecological process that lead to uh, to the um, cessation of river biodiversity. Body size. Body size is generally easy to measure and as a community feature it is related to an extensive number of species traits and ecological process and has been suggested an effective metric to assess community change and ecosystem state. As a report, um, body size is related to many life history traits of species and ecological process uh, like uh, metabolism, longevity, and reproductive rate. Here we have a study error. As we see in this slide, we have prepared a map of our study error where they are located at the north of Iran, the Caspian, the coastal zone, Gorgon Road, and, uh, and Tajan rivers. There were three stations in the Tajan River and uh, Gorgon Road rivers and two stations in the blue color of the Tajabatiskele in the Caspian Sea in the nine color of the north of Iran Basin. Uh, as you see in this slide, uh, 
we want to uh, talk about laboratory experiments. And uh, uh, first of all, microinvertebrate sampling was performed using these types in three ecosystems. Typical chemical uh, parameters of water, including temperature, salinity, conductivity, dissolved oxygen, and pH, were measured in the beginning and in, uh, end of the sampling period. Um, by using using a device letter WA The samples were transferred to the laboratory at four uh, four degrees centigrade and uh, microinvertebrates were separated from recycles and individuals from each recycle were fixed in four crescent buffered formalin and stored. Bottom length was measured with NIS element software and all individuals were uh, over the right to constant rate for uh, at least uh, 72 over at uh, 60 uh, degree centigrade and uh, and uh, all individual uh, weighted on uh, uh, so theory micro analysis balance after measuring uh, frames and composition at uh, 500 degrees centigrade for six hours. A sampling of microinvertebrate was conducted at uh, three locations. And microinvertebrate samples were collected from the um, as I thought. Uh, from the Cassian Sea and Tajan and Golden Loop rivers. Here we determine the distri distribution and diversity of the micro microinvertebrates. To determine the distribution and diversity of microinvertebrates, biodiversity indicators, including Shannon Wiener Diversity Index, uh, Simpson. Uh, uh, Simpson Diversity Index and Model of Enrichment Index were used. Uh, I can see the slide uh, with the uh, The correlation between environmental factors and calculated uh, indicators was uh, determined based on the CNN method uh, and based on the obtained data. Their classification was performed using a standard method, method in Chenko 4.5 software. The effect of environmental factors on the biodiversity of microinvertebrates. Here we can see the figure in the Caspian Sea ecosystem for fertilizer of and crab were identified. According to the first axis as the basis of correlation analysis, crab and pomerita uh, abundance had a positive relationship with salinity and pH of water. The Nerita family also showed a positive relationship with the water conductivity. All three types of had the uh, high positive relationship with the dissolved oxygen and temperature parameters. Based on the length and direction of the vector, the dissolved oxygen parameter was in the first place as the most influential uh, environmental uh, variables. Then the temperature and pH parameters were in the second place. Simpson, Margalef, and Shannon indicate 
were co uh, correlated with uh, dissolved oxygen and temperature factors. Here uh, we show the effect of uh, environmental factors on biodiversity of uh, Tajan River Mafredentic. In the Tajan River ecosystem, eight taxas were identified, such as the uh, Lambersi dog, Thurnamida, Galasifinerida, Mutilida, Lambertelide, Aiduride, Betida, and Tolifisida. The first axis as the basis of correlation analysis showed that the frequency of Tolifisida and Gelasifinida uh, and the Shannon Zimmer index was positively correlated with electrical conductivity and solvency. In addition, the frequency of uh, lumber corridor and uh, lumber speed finalist was uh, positively correlated with conductivity uh, and dissolved oxygen was clearly identified as the first important environmental parameter and uh, dissolve uh, parameters that had a significant effect on the abundance of the Michelita family. The effect of pH and dissolve oxygen on the frequency the Agrida family were positive. Uh, dissolve uh, oxygen effect on the frequency of the uh, that was positive. Finally, dissolve oxygen parameter was considered as the first effective environmental parameter. Then, then pH was uh, as the second effective environmental parameter. The effect of uh, environmental factor on biodiversity of Gorgon Wood uh, River not in the forest. In the Gorgon Wood River, uh, Turanomida, Tabamida, and Agrida uh, have been identified. According to the first uh, act, uh, according to the first axis, as the basis uh, of correlation analysis, the abandon of the Theronomida family was positively correlated with environmental parameters such as temperature, salinity, uh, electric uh, conductivity, and pH. Okay, and now we can demonstrate with a slide. As with the effects of environmental factor on the body size of mountain vertebrates the patient the first axis as the best basis of uh, correlation analysis mentioned that salinity pH temperature dissolved oxygen has a positive relationship with microbenesis body size and salinity uh, temperature and pH had a positive effect on the body size of crab and nerigida. The, in the next slide, the effect of environmental factors on the body size, um, size of the Tajan River mountain in the separated shell. Tem uh, temperature and pH were the most influential uh, environmental parameters based on the first axis as the basis of correlation analysis. Body weight was positively, uh, sorry, body weight was positively uh, correlated with pH, and there was a positive correlation between the body weight of uh, microbenzies and temperature. Salinity and uh, conductivity did not affect the body size and weight. Temperature had a positive effect on the body weight of Lambercolide and Gelasifonida. Also, Turonomida. Temperature had a positive effect on the body size of the Gelasifonida and Turonomida. The pH had a positive effect on the body size of uh, 
multiplies of the multimeter and body weight of lumbar cylinder. As well as on the body weight of the GPC, the lumbar cylinder, the spinometer, and the manometer. Uh, this format has a positive effect on the body size of the lumbar cylinder, the spinometer, and the manometer. The result of session was positive, positively correlated with the body weight of the lumbar cruiser, the spinometer, the pyramid of finite, and the body size of the 2D pixel. The effect of uh, here uh, we have the effect of the environment of factors on the body size of such an hemisphere, multi invertebrate. The first axis as the basis of correlation analysis argues that salinity and the temperature and conductivity had a positive effect on the body length and the body weight of macro uh, macroinvertebrates. Finally, we have the uh, conclusion section. In this study, we attempt to show for the first time in Iran how environmental factors affect body size in microinvertebrates. MI3 ecosystem, the variety of uh, microinvertebrates in Tajan River, were higher than other ecosystems and uh, the most influence environmental factors on the body size were dissolved oxygen pH and temperature. The main environmental factors affecting biodiversity and body size of just uh, and two micro invertebrates were temperature and salinity. The Golgan River has low macro benthic biodiversity and Macro invertebrate body size was affected by temperature, salinity, and pH. Thank you, Ms. Parisa Muhammad Sifat, for this wonderful presentation. Now we have our second presenter from the University of Education, Lahore, Mr. Ali Hassan. He will present her research work on the title Partial Physiochemical Characterization and Identification of Microbial Strain from Gut of Major Carbs. Please, Mr. Ali Hassan. Go. Rahman Rahim. My name is Ali Hassan. The topic of my presentation is partial physiochemical characterization and identification of microbial stain from cut of major carbs. Introduction. The word aquaculture means the culturing of aquatic animals and plants. In, the, in last few decades, aquaculture emerged as rapid growing sector of agriculture. It plays a great role in providing good quality food, strengthening of economy of the country and job opportunity. Aquaculture product demand is increasing day by day because livestock don't fulfill the human needs. This increase in human population is put, putting more pressure on industry of aquaculture to produce more and high quality of seafood. Fishes are grown for the commercial purpose in aquaculture industry from your chromic nauticulus in fresh water. It is reported that from 1988 to 2006, Nils Lapia have 75,000 ton production in Mexico. It is third largest group which is culture in aquaculture. Although the Indian major carp, Katla Katla, also economically important South Asian fresh water fish in carp family, which is native to river and lake of India, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Pakistan. Meanwhile, the use of probiotics highly recommended in new practice in aquaculture. Probiotics not only helpful for reduction of antimicrobial chemicals and antibodies, but also develop growth and appetite. These are microorganisms which use as food supplement to improve the balance of intestinal microbes and help the organism from the disease. No other probiotics are very useful and significantly variable for fish bacterial disease control. It can enhance antibacterial substantive production and, and nutritional competition. Material and method. Fish sampling. Fish samples were collected from freshwater sources which were dissected with the help 
of the live dissecting tissues at lab of department of zoology university of education lahore faisalabad campus isolation of bacterial community a diverse community of bacteria were isolated from gut of species through uh, serial dilution method isolated bacteria were cultured on lysogenic broth and demon uh, uh, demon rogosa and the sharp agar uh, nutrient media in glass petri dish but uh, probiotic bacteria were transformed uh, from lb uh, media to mrx nutrient media from the purpose of purification and store at cut temperature 30 degrees centigrade in the incubator physiochemical characterization probiotic bacteria were characterized on the basis of morphology morphology uh, morphology cut as size shape and color of the colony of bacteria the bacteria were archaeochemically characterized on the basis of of lactic acid zone formation by addition of calcium carbonate in mrx nutrient media and incubated for various or at the same set optimum temperature molecular pathways in rna r ribosomal rna sequence molecular pathways are involved in x ribosomal rna sequence at the lab of biotechnology department government college university faisalabad pakistan but the uh, commercial sequencing of bacteria the purified and collected probiotic bacteria were commercially sequenced from uh, thermo uh, fisher korea company name the sequence data were submitted to the national center for biotechnology information and tbi for novelty and diversity of bacteria all the modification and identification of no, uh, novel probiotic strains will be informative for all the researchers to the platform of ntbi result the galdi culture plays that uh, that show the physical uh, physically physical appearance of the plant uh, of the culture the the got uh, also physical appearance a big uh, plays that show the uh, morphological culture of the plants uh, bacteria the got also show the uh, morphological culture culturing so uh, the got the morphological thing and last uh, the uh, the gas uh, and last one the for use the chemical calcium carbonate to for the uh, chemical characterization of the uh, bacterial bacteria thank you so much for your time thank you mr ali hasan for this wonderful and informative talk Now our next presenter is from Chorustan University of Veterinary and Animal Sciences, Ms. Ghania Kali. She will present her research work under the title "Geospatial Analysis of Reversal of Desertification in Bahawalpur City of Chorustan Desert." Please, Ms. Ghania Kali. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. This is Ghania Kali. and uh, i am from jolisan university of veterinary and animal sciences bahawalpur first of all i would like to thanks i cares for giving us a great opportunity to present our work over here the topic of my presentation is geospatial analysis of reversal of desertification in bahawalpur city of jolisan desert here is its introduction bahawalpur city is situated in cholistan desert so it is very important to know the profound history of cholistan desert it is considered that cholistan desert is a genesis of civilization and one of its civilization is hakra valley civilization that is considered to be the very earliest civilization of indian subcontinent and it remains from 600 bc to 1200 bc after the collapse of this civilization the process of desertification has been start after millions of years now it is considered there are some of the ecological changes in this region so it is important to check out these ecological changes and these has been monitored through remote sensing and geographic information system the satellite imagery of lenses 7 and lenses 8 has been used in this study and this imagery has been downloaded from usgs earth explorer and has been processed in arcgis the aims and objectives of this studies are 
to evaluate the land use land cover changes from 2000 to 2020 in Bhawalpur city and to check out population change and livestock change in available years of data and to check out the relationship between land use land cover changes with population and livestock and to describe these changes in the form of maps and graphs. The study area uh, is uh, Bhawalpur city and the boundary map of Bhawalpur city is given in this map that is shown in purple. And human population census data and livestock census data have been used in this study to compare this from with la land use land cover changes. The first process, the first analysis that has been used in this study is land use land cover supervised image classification. And the Landsat imagery is downloaded from different sites. That is Landsat 7, Landsat 8 has been used from USGS Earth Explorer. The Landsat imagery is always in the form of bands and it is very important to have band composite uh, to merge the bands and to form a single band. And uh, after band composite, the classification has been done. The algorithm that has been used in this classification is supervised machine learning algorithm. And the different training samples of different five classes has been used in this study. And the most important five classes are built of vegetation, agriculture, desert, and water body. After um, uh, running of this algorithm, the area occupied by these five classes has been calculated through this software of ArcGIS. You can see the different color scheme has been used for different classes. Built up is uh, uh, represented by red, vegetation by yellow, agriculture by green, dessert with sand color, and water body with uh, ultra blue color. And uh, there are different trends in in the area occupied by these regions, there is an increasing trend of built up areas. It started from, in the March 2000, it started from 7,703 hectares and it goes to 9,515 hectares in September 2020. The same, uh, uh, the same, same area has been calculated and uh, the trend is different. You can see the desert, have decreasing trend. The area has been decreased uh, within the time span of 20 years. So the gene detection analysis done between these classifications, two gene detection analysis, March 2000 to 2020 and September 2000 to September 2020. It is done through a intersection of two classification by geoprocessing tool and the area is calculated by count gene by field calculator. This is interconversion all five classes into another five classes. So here is the area in, given in hectares and area percentage. This is the change of one class from one class to another class. You can see some of the percentages over here, but main area that has been converted into built up area, desert. That is 1,252 hectares and the percentage of six other conversions are minimums. This was our hypothesis that there's a decrease in desert and increase in built up area. So it has been monitored through this analysis. NDVI and NDVI. NDVI is a normalized difference vegetative index and NDVI is normalized difference built up index. NDVI is a measure of surface reflectance of biomass. That is calculated through different bands. Uh, we know there are different bands uh, that reflect in, in different regions of electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, it uh, used uh, near infrared and red band, and NDVI is a measure of surface reflectance of built up pixels, built up area, and uh, it has uh, uh, short wave infrared and near infrared bands. After calculation, the NDVA and NDVA regression analysis is uh, check out uh, between these and to check out the relationship between NDVA and NDVA. And it gives a different coefficient. In March 2000, it gives a 0.75. In September 2000, it gives a 1. 
In March 2020, it gave the relationship of 0.75. In September 2020, it gives the coefficient of 0.75. That represents that it has very strong relationship between NDVI and NDVI. So the final impact of land use land cover on livestock and population. Our main uh, study was concerning that there should be changes in land use land cover classification with uh, population and livestock. So we can see there in this figure, you can see there's 1998, they're giving a little figure as compared to 2017, that is giving us a bit bigger figure of population. So we can say that increase in build up with population and there is a conversion of desert area into build up. Uh, this has been checked through uh, interconversion of different classes and change reduction analysis. And this is a depletion of nature resources uh, like desert and species associated with this desert. The livestock overall has been decreased, but there uh, is different trend within the livestock. You can see livestock like cattle, sheep uh, increases uh, to meet up the demand of the city. To meet up the demand of the city and like uh, uh, livestock like mules, asses, camels and buffaloes have been decreased uh, due to decrease of the pastures land and open land. And the conclusion of this study is Built up area increased by 18% and population decreased by 35% and livestock is 12.7%. And there's a 6% increase in vegetation. And there is 15% drop in water bodies and there's almost 100% decrease in desert with variable figures of agriculture. So it is a conclusion of my study and uh, it is all about my study. Thank you for listening. Here are some of the references. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Ghania Kali. There was an excellent and informative presentation. Now our next presenter is from University of Agriculture, Faisalabad, Mr. Inzamamul Haq. He will present her research work on the title, The Combined Effect of Different Irrigation Regimes and systemic insecticide on the body of cotton white fly, Bemisia tabasai, Hemiptera, Elorididi, under greenhouse conditions. Please, Mr. Inzamabal Hat. Hello, everyone. My name is Inzamabal Haq, and I am from Department of Entomology, University of Agriculture, Faisalabad. Today, I am going to discuss about the combined effect of different irrigation regimes and systemic insecticides on biology of cotton whitefly, Bemisia tabaki, under greenhouse conditions. So, first, let's discuss about the plant cotton plant that why did we selected cotton as cotton is a major cash crop and has a significant role in the economy of pakistan it contributes 22 percent to the country's gross domestic product in the nationwide economy by the value added products in agriculture pakistan is the fourth largest country for the production of cotton but Per hectare yield is low due to insect pests attack, which can cause 30 to 35 percent loss in cotton yield. The severe attack of insect pests caused heavy qualitative and quantitative yield losses, varying from 40 to 50 percent. With the increasing trend of transgenic cotton in Pakistan, the farmers are facing problems regarding sucking pests complex for which they have to adopt intensive control methods mainly relying on the chemical control. Among sucking pests complex, whitefly is the most notorious and key pest. Cotton whitefly, whose technical name is Bemesis tabaki, damages the plant in three different ways. Firstly, by 
constantly sucking the cell sap resulting in 50% reduction in ball production. Second, by secreting honey dewdrops on which sooty mold develops. And third one, also by acting as a vector of leaf curl virus disease. The average yield loss in Pakistan caused by cotton leaf curl virus was reported to be 38.7%. There are different pest control tactics, but the most common and quicker one is that of chemical control, which is generally adopted by our farming community. Chemical control of the pests becomes imperative when all other control methods fail to control the target pests. But on the other hand, indiscriminate use of insecticides has not only caused the resistance problems in, the, in these pests, but it has also polluted the environment along with other health hazards. Therefore, the judicious and effective use of chemicals at proper time is most important. Insecticides applications have a broad spectrum activity for the eradication of variety of insect pests of several agricultural crops. In their specificity, they can be stimulated by inhalation, touch and by ingestion. Even though there are some chemical compounds which are formulated in such a way that their efficacy cannot be fully achieved until the compound is present within the plant for which protection is needed. Such chemical compounds are known as systemics. So in current experiment, effect of irrigation was assessed on the efficacy of systemic insecticides. Its effect was also checked on different plant parameters that whether it affect positively or negatively. And also, also its effect was also checked on insect parameters. So the current experiment was conducted in semi-natural conditions. The experiment was laid out under completely randomized design with three applications of each treatment in greenhouse at University of Agriculture, Faisalabad. A factorial experiment involving two levels of irrigation, either regular irrigation and defect irrigation, and two insecticide applications, insecticide application and no insecticide application was conducted. The results indicated that all the treatments significantly affected the biological parameters of Vemisia tabaki and physiological parameters of cotton plant. A significantly higher mortality percentage 87.37% and lower OV position 37x and lower egg to nymph ratio which was just 64% and a lower nymph to adult emergence ratio which was 53% was recorded in regular irrigation and insecticide application treatments as compared to defect irrigation and no insecticide application. Similarly, increased plant height which was 105 cm, number of, increased number of branches 19 per plant, increased number of balls per plant and increased cotton yield was recorded in plants receiving regular irrigation and insecticide applications as compared to those plants with defect irrigation and no insecticide application. So it is clear from the results that systemic insecticides performed better against Bimisha Tabaki in regular irrigation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Inzabamul Haq, for this uh, wonderful presentation. Now, our next presenter is from Government College University, Faisalabad, Ms. Taskeem Fatma. She will present her research work on the title Comparative Effect of Other Deducta, Indica, and 17 Alpha Methyl Testosterone on the Reproductive Performance and Gonadal History in Oreochromis Neurotocus. Please, Ms. Taskeem Fatma. In the name of Allah, the most merciful and beneficent. I am the skin Fatma from GC University, Faisalabad. 
First of all, I would like to thank ECAS 2022 for providing me the opportunity to present my work entitled Comparative Effect of Azadracta Indica and 17 Alpha Methyl Testosterone on the Reproductive Performance and Gonadal History in Oriprimus Neuroticus. Aquaculture is the fastest growing food producing sector in the world contributing one third of the global food fish production. As you know fish farming is important due to the growing demand of the fish by the large population and for this purpose 13,000 fish farms have so far been established across the Pakistan. Consumption of the fish production in Pakistan 50% of the fish is consumed locally, 22% is exported and 28% is converted into the fish meal. Why we choose the Erichromis nauticus? Because they are easy to grow, fastest growth rate, resistant to disease, tolerate the variety of environmental conditions, efficient utilization of plant diet, high tolerance to poor water quality, and high market value. Why we masculinize the Erichromis nauticus? Early maturation and frequent spawning damage the profit of aquaculture. Metabolic energy in males is directed towards growth and masculinization. Males grow 20% faster than females. For the material and methods, fry were collected from Faisalabad and acclimatized for 2 to 3 days. And for the stocking, 250 fry in 5 aquarium, each with 1 replica. The duration of treatment phase was of 30 days, and this in this 1 control and 4 treatment diets were provided. The natural source and synthetic source were used for the treatment diets. Diet, uh, the natural source was nameless powder. They, why we choose the nameless powder? Because they are affordable safe for humans, eco-friendly, phytochemicals including saponins and flavonoids act as fertility impairment and the hormone based diet because they have both androgenic and anabolic effect, simple, easy and highly effective. The duration of rearing phase was of 3 to 4 months and in this all water quality parameters was monitored and the dissolved oxygen was maintained through the capillary system. For, uh, there are the different techniques for the masculinization of the lapia, but the oral administration and immersion methods were commonly used. Here we use the oral administration method, 17 alpha methyl testosterone and leafless powder provided in the diet. For the feed preparation, basic feed ingredients were added with the uh, hormone and the nameless powder and the concentration of hormone was 60 mg per kg and 70 mg per kg and the nameless powder concentration was 2 g per kg and 3 g per kg. All the ingredients were mixed and pellets were prepared and dried and stored in the airtight container. Uh, for the analytical analysis, uh, dry matter uh, was uh, dry, matter was dried by oven drying and ash analysis by lactic furnace, crude fat by socket system and crude protein by microgel done analysis and the moisture percentage was uh, measured by the following formula and the gonadosomatic and the hepatosomatic index was measured by using the forming for following formula. For the growth studies, uh, the increase in weight was seen maximum at the end of experiment in the control group at the 6th fortnight and the minimum in the NLM3 group. For the length, the maximum length was uh, seen in MT70 group and the minimum in NLM2 group. The specific growth rate was maximum in control group and minimum in NLM2 and LM3 group. And for the protein efficiency ratio, the results showed the non-significant variations. The results of the approximate chemical composition of body meat revealed that the plant treatment diet have impact on the body meat of the fish. Ash and moisture percentage were maximum in the neem leaves having 3 gram per kg in the diet. And the dry matter amount was maximum in the control group. And uh, the maximum uh, crude protein and maximum fat was in NLM3 group. Hepatosomatic index was maximum in control group and minimum in NLM3 group and the gonadosomatic index was maximum in the MT70 group and minimum in NLM3 group. The highest percentage of males was observed in MT70 group at the end of the experiment and minimum in the NLM3 group. For the gonadal studies, the results showed that the percentage of male was maximum in the treatment having the high concentration of the 17 alpha methyl testosterone at the dose of 70 mg per kg in the diet, while 60 mg per kg of the hormone in the diet showed the 75% of the males. The percentage of male was 30% in the treatment NLM3 group and 
ट्वेंटी परसेंट इन द ट्रीटमेंट हैविंग द थ्री ग्राम पर के जी ऑफ द नीम लीव इन द डाइट द परसेंटेज ऑफ द स्टीराइल वॉज फोर्टी परसेंट इन द टू ग्राम पर के जी ऑफ द नीम लीव पाउडर डाइट एंड फिफ्टी परसेंट इन एन एल एम थ्री ग्रुप द रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस स्टडी एग्जिबिटेड बाई इंक्रीजिंग द कंसनट्रेशन ऑफ नीम लीव पाउडर इन द फिश डाइट इंक्रीज द परसेंटेज ऑफ स्टीराइल तिलापिया एज कम्पेयर टू द अदर ग्रुप्स here is the uh, testis histology of the male orichromis nilotics and the second picture is the ovary histology of the female orichromis nilotics the steroid hormone methyl testosterone act as an anabol anabolic hormone which has crucial role in accelerating the growth of tilapia silvia et al 2022 also conducted the same results the percentage of male was maximum in the treatment having the high dose of the hormone Singh et al also conducted the same experiment in the sore tail fish in which the 17 alpha methyl testosterone was used the result are in favor of our findings that the increase of hormone concentration increase the ratio of the male compared to all other treatment addition of nemlis in the diet have no effect on the sex reversal and mehrim et al 2019 also concluded the same results Kepinga et al also concluded the same results that by increasing the dietary neem effect the gonads and the uh, uh, neem effect the gonads and cause the alteration in ovary and testis the study demonstrated that supplementation of synthetic hormones in the diet of the fish played crucial role for masculinization the hormones also improved improved the growth rate of tilapia in spite of its importance in tilapia culture for producing all male tilapia and accelerating the growth is risk criticized for its harmful effect on the environment on the consumers and on the non targeted fishes however the supplementation of diet with the natural source caused the sterility in the nil tilapia for obtaining the profitable tilapia the control of prolific breeding is very important and nemlis powder administered to the fish diet act as the anti fertility agent further studies are needed for the real estimation of nemlis and the other natural sources such as moringa papaya and aloe vera effectiveness for inhibiting the breeding capacity as for human concern it is uh, recommended to use other phytochemicals in fish diet due to their easy availability cost effectiveness and environment friendly characteristics Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Skin Fatma, for this interesting and informative presentation. Now, our next presenter is from Government College, University of Faisalabad, Umme Habiba. She will present her research work on the title "Evaluation of Enzyme Additive Amylase on Growth Performance, Digestive Enzyme Activity." apparent nutrient digestibility and body composition in labior rita please miss umme habiba in the name of allah the most gracious the most merciful myself umme habiba from government college university faisalabad i am here to represent my work entitled evaluation of enzyme additive amylase on growth performance digestive enzyme activity apparent nutrient digestibility and body composition in labior rita to investigate the effect of exogenous enzyme the feeding trial was conducted as we know the aquaculture is the rapidly growing food industry in the world economically it is important because it reduces poverty giving long term employment pakistan ranks 34 number in the world for the fish production about 50% of fish production is consumed locally and 22% is exported fish is a rich source of protein and omega 3 fatty acid The question is here why I choose labirohita the labirohita usually stocked at high rate due to its high consumer demand amylase play an important role in the fish metabolism amylase helps in digestion and also eliminating the anti nutritional factor in the fish diet here is the methodology the fingerlings was purchased from the fish hatchery and acclimatized for a week the diet was formulated and then prepared by grinding all the feed ingredients 120 fingerlings was randomly distributed in six tanks one control group and two treatment groups each with replica then the duration of trial was 90 days all the water quality parameter was monitored dissolved oxygen was maintained through the capillary system the fecal material was collected twice a day the growth performance following growth parameters increase in length increase in weight condition factor protein efficiency ratio and specific growth rate was measured at fortnight basis the analytical analysis was done 
The sample of feed, fecal material and body meat was homogenized utilizing a mortar and pistol. The dry matter was calculated by oven dry ash analysis by electrical furnace, crude fat by chocolate system, crude protein by micro gel analysis. After that, then all the results obtained was statistically analyzed using the SPSS software. Analysis for the growth performance shows the maximum increase in weight and length in enzyme supplemented group as compared to the non supplemented group. So, results for the condition factors show the maximum growth in AM1 having a mileage 3 mg per kg and minimum growth in control group. In the case of specific growth rate, the bar chart shows maximum growth in AM2 having a mileage 6 mg per kg and in protein efficiency ratio, the maximum growth rate was observed in AM1 having the mileage 3 mg per kg. While in the digestive enzyme activity, the uh, in the digestive enzyme activity, both liver and gut showed maximum enzyme activity in amylase supplemented group. Exogenous enzyme which was added to the fish meal showed the favorable results. In this study, varying level of enzyme amylase are added to the diet to see the possible effect on the labiorita. Enzyme supplementation improves the growth performance, health and feed utilization of the feed. The present studies also reveal that the enzyme amylase promotes the digestibility and utilization of diet. So amylase has a growth promoting effect without degrade, degrading the immune modulation function. Through all these you know, results, it was concluded that the amylase enzyme supplementation play a remarkable role in the fish feed because it enhances the growth of Liberohita. Different level of enzyme having a striking effect on the digestibility and nutrient digestibility in the Liberohita. Amylase supplementation also play a key role in the body composition of Rohu. It has a positive effect on liver and gut of the Liberohita. So in order to minimize the fish production, a dedicated awareness should be given to the people that fish production should be enhanced by adding the enzyme amylase in the fish feed. Here are references. Thank you for your time. Thank you Ms. Umi Habiba for this interesting and informative presentation. Now, our second, our last presenter of this session is coming out from Ghazi University, Dera Ghazi Khan, Mr. Muhammad Ilyas. He will present her research work on the title, Dated Record of Hipparian Mammalian Equity from Electra Formation, Sakhi Server Area, Dera Ghazi Khan, South Punjab, Pakistan. Please, Mr. Muhammad Ilyas. Assalamu alaikum. I am Muhammad Ilyas from the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology and Paleoanthropology. Beijing, China. I am here to discuss my abstract on data records of Hipparion from Litra Formation, Sakhi Server Area, Deraghazi Khan, South Punjab, Pakistan, in your International Conference on Applied Zoology, 2022. This is the outline of my abstract and presentation introductions, aims and objectives, phylogenetic diagram, results and references. In introduction, the first appearance of Hipparion fauna in the old world was a remarkable biotic event in the quaternary period. Equus fauna are critical research material for studies on evolutionary, climatic and environmental changes during the quaternary period in Europe and Asia. Hipparion fauna are essential for the Pleistocene, Paleobiology and Paleoenvironment in, in Europe and Asia. Sakhi Server area has rich fossil diversity and no any paleontological expert work in this range of Sulman mountains properly. Many fossils in the area of Sakhi Server underwent radiative speciation, particularly Hipparion fossils. Our aims and objectives to work in the Sakhi Server area are to evaluate the evolution of Hipparion that lived millions of years ago, to examine basic similarities and differences of morphological and metric characters of species in the whole world, to interpret 
پیلو انوائرمنٹ اینڈ ایکالوجیکل اوریجنز آف سخی سرور سائٹ اینڈ دا سوالکس آف پاکستان دس از دی فائلو جینیٹک انیلیسز آف آور ہپورین فانا دیٹ واز ڈسکسڈ ان 2021 بائی چینا دیز آر دا ریزرٹس آف آور ڈیفرنٹ فیلڈ ورکس نیومرس فیلڈ ورکس آن دا فوسل سائٹس ہیو بین ڈن تھرو آؤٹ دا سلمان رینج آف سخی سرور ایریا showing how modern morphological, vegetational and faunal traits evolved from the Eocene to Holocene. Although a lot of effort is needed to explore the different localities of fossils in the whole Sulman range of Pakistan for the paleontological work. However, the difficulty is the published evidence is scant on distribution information of different species of fauna in the old world periods these are the references which i have used in my abstract thank you for your attention thank you mr mohammed ilyas for this interesting and informative presentation with this presentation our session is completed i hope you have enjoyed all the presentation and learned many new research areas from all these session at the end i would like to well th thank you all participant for joining presenter for uh, sharing their research work this was the second last session of conference day one there will be last session of conference day one which will be next session session number seven which will be moderator our next moderator miss mavish nod khan please stay connected with us and stay happy thank you and allah hafiz